The American bald eagle can be seen flying all year long over waterways in the Upper Cumberland region of Tennessee and Kentucky, but that wasn't always the case. A four-year eagle restoration program at Dale Hollow Lake between 1987 and 1991 restored nesting populations. The project manager still works for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and recalls how difficult it was for eagles to make a comeback after a man-made product affected the bird's ability to reproduce and literally endangered the species. Well, it's kind of interesting because 1961 was the last year that there were nesting eagles in the state of Tennessee. DDT was a pesticide that was widely used after World War II and it gets into the uh, ecosystem and it's very persistent. DDE, DDD are persistent forms of that and once it gets into the ecosystem it comes up the food chain and eagle being at the top of the food chain it's more concentrated there than it is otherwise. So the state of Tennessee and the Corps of Engineers partnered with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to start a restoration port program. And one of the main reasons that the Corps of Engineers got involved is we were looking at a forestry management program trying to more actively uh, manage the forest that we have around our reservoirs. Because we have roughly a half million acres and that's a very tempting uh, opportunity for enhancing wildlife. Over the span of the project, 44 eagles were transplanted from nests in Alaska, Minnesota, and Wisconsin, and then reared, tagged, and released at Irons Creek on the shoreline of Dale Hollow Lake. Using a technique called hacking, a team from Tennessee Technological University, in cooperation with the Corps and Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, released the birds in the hope that they would return when mature to where they first flew to reproduce and to live year-round in the nesting location. Wherever they went, we just we just sort of tried to watch them. Again, they once they were free of that tower, uh, they had the transmitter on them, uh, on the tail feathers, and so we would we just sort of monitor them around the lake, and and uh, some would stay four or five days. Uh, and then they just sort of disappear. The maintenance staff and park rangers helped clear land near the water and with building a hacking tower where college students would feed and water the birds and observe their behaviors until released back into the wild. A crew from Upper Cumberland Electric helped auger utility poles and then Dale Hollow crews constructed two cages and observation deck 23 feet in the air. And I'd go up there with the students uh, quite a bit and sit there and just look through the two-way mirror and sit there and observe them. And uh, you, you learn quite a bit just, uh, just by watching them because uh, you're right out here, right here with them. Watch how they respond to one another and then they're drinking water out of the bowls and, and uh, it's, it, it was, it was, it, I guess you could say it was an eight. It was, a, it was a, a cool experience for a young ranger to start in and doing something like that. After completion of the tower in 1987, the eagles arrived in pet crates after a long journey where human interaction, flights and boat rides, not to mention temperatures in the 90s, stressed them. They took a little squeeze bottle and, and squirted Gatorade in their mouth and that uh, perked them up and they said that helped them get their electrolytes back in them. And I thought that was kind of unique that uh, something that, you know, was kind of kind of developed for football players and everything else like that would be able to work and, and help wildlife. Uh, and it just, I, I just kind of thought that was kind of a unique thing that uh, here we're feeding Gatorade to, to eagles. <laughs> Tennessee Tech students worked day and night on site each summer to care for the eagles and took note of their every action. My job as one of the students was to observe, monitor, feed, and uh, document the actions or so forth of the eagles that were placed in the tower. I would like to think that we actually contributed some into reintroduction to the eagles in this area. So they want for our effort and text and, and core effort, they won't be here right now. And we've got some, actually we have nesting sites here on the lake itself. After six weeks on the hacking tower, the team attached transmitters to the eagles and they were equipped with wing markers in preparation for their release. On the day of their release, the gates on the front of the cages were lowered 
and everyone watched to see them take their first flights. Agencies like the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife, Tennessee Valley Authority, Tennessee Conservation League, Alaska Fish and Wildlife Service, U.S. Forest Service in Alaska, Boy Scouts of America, and numerous other volunteers had roles in reintroducing the eagles along waterways in Tennessee and Kentucky. Every year in January, the public enjoys an Eagle Watch program at Dale Hollow Lake, where eagles come in the winter to feed. But with the success of this program, some eagles call the area home, build their nests, and reproduce their young, a testament of the efforts of many a quarter century ago. This is Lee Roberts reporting for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers National District at Dale Hollow Lake in Salina, Tennessee.